Today what we want to do is calculate the opportunity cost and determine how do we calculate the opportunity cost given the information provided in the schedule. All right? What you're going to do is you're going to take the schedule and you're going to plot it on a production possibilities curve or possibilities frontier. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the information that's given here and you're going to plot it. Now, we put pizza on the y-axis so that um, because it's a consumer item. And we put our capital good here on the x-axis because <clears throat> bulldozers are quite capital equipment. And the simple way to calculate the opportunity cost is simply to take the slope, which is our change in y over the change in x. All right? And that's going to give us the slope. Now, to calculate to, to calculate the opportunity cost of the x-axis, we use this slope. Right? We use this simple equation to help us figure that out. To calculate for y, for the y-axis, we use the inverse. So we're going to put the change in x over the change in y. And that's going to help us calculate that. And that's important because any uh, great source of confusion comes from trying to figure out which one comes first. So once we've plotted it, and once we've figured out you know, the simple equation here, what we want to do is look at this, look at this schedule and tell us, and, and look and see what it tells us. And as we go along this curve, uh, have, look at it and see what it tells us. Well, what we notice is that if we go from point E to D, Right at that point, we have gained right um, 20 bulldozers, and we've lost 40 tons of pizza, or however you want to put it. So, in terms of a simple ratio, we have uh, gained 20 bulldozers, and what we've done is we've given up. We've given up, sorry, excuse me, we've given up 40 pizzas. Okay, now that's what that schedule tells us. So as we plot this, it's important that we plot this so that we can see that. Now, the reverse of that, right, what we can tell now, or what we could say now is that, okay, well, and it doesn't matter which point you take this from, because in this particular example, we're going to get uh, a constant slope here. So if we look at this from the other perspective, let's say we were going from D to E, and again, it doesn't matter which point we take, what we're going to notice is we're going to gain 40 pizzas, right, and we're going to give up 20 bulldozers, okay? So it's important that we understand that and we keep that clear. All right, so let's figure out what is the actual opportunity cost. Now, we like to deal in economics with margin or marginal analysis. We like to determine and simplify things, which is why we prefer to use economic models like the production possibilities frontier or curve. What we like to do is simplify things and look at, well, what would happen if we were to gain one bulldozer? What would we give up? So let's take our slope again the change in Y over the change in X. So we were looking at one bulldozer, right? What, how much pizza are we going to give up? Well, in this particular instance, to gain one bulldozer, what we're going to do is we're going to put 40 over 20, and that's going to give us two pizzas. So if we wanted to add one more bulldozer or shift the resources, to build one more bulldozer, we would have, right, one bulldozer would be, to, to gain one bulldozer, we would be giving up two pizzas. So as we go to, you know, uh, shift our resources and move our resources around, as we gain that one bulldozer, as we build one more bulldozer, uh, as we shift land 
labor and capital to the production of that bulldozer, uh, we would lose pieces. So let's take this from the other example. Right? So let's take a look at pizza. And this is going to be important to understand because we're going to use this um, in terms of trying to figure out uh, what's occurring to, um, you know, comparative advantage and how do we determine who should specialize in which product, uh, in the production of that particular product. So let's take this from the other angle. Let's say we were adding one pizza. Well, how much would we lose? Well, again, this is the change in X now over the change in Y. So what we would end up with is 20 over 40, or one half of a bulldozer. Okay. So again, the idea here is that you know we would be uh, shifting our resources away from the production of that particular of the particular bulldozer and putting it into pizza. So as we gain one pizza, we lose or give up a half a bulldozer. Now, just in terms of review, again, it doesn't matter where you start. Uh, what we should notice right away, this is very different from a previous example that we used. Uh, there's, this is not concave. This is a constant slope, right? And what we could assume here is that it's constant because when we go to measure the slope, as we go from E to D to C to B, we would notice that, or we go B, C, D, E, we would notice that the slope is um, going to be, or the opportunity cost is going to be constant. So what does that tell us? Well, what it tells us, and again, remember, if we are at U, it's unattainable because we don't have the resources. If we're at G, we have idle resources. And if we're at E, we're productively efficient. And that's, again, a review of what we've done in the past. But why is this constant? Why does it look this way? What does this say about the resources that we have and the resources that we're using? And again, when we talked about resources, we talked about land, labor, and capital. Right, and in this particular made up example, right, what we would notice is that it's constant because these resources are perfect substitutes. Unlike the previous examples that we've used where the costs have been increasing as we've gone down this slope, what we notice here in this particular example is that everything is virtually going to be uh, the same. It's going to be constant. So that concludes today's lesson on how to calculate opportunity costs. See you later.